Hi, I'm Amy McIntosh. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. I do a lot of scoliosis surgery and I'm in Dallas, Texas. Halo gravity traction is a technique or a tool in which a halo ring is applied to a child's head who has significant kyphoscoliosis. Kyphoscoliosis is a later, lateral deviation of the spine, but also a significant roundness of the spine. And basically, you slowly add weight up to 80% body weight, which then gradually elongates and derotates the spine and allows you to gain significant correction. Uh, it has also other advantages where it allows the child to gain weight. Oftentimes we notice that the child's pulmonary function or breathing capacity also improves in halo gravity traction. And it's just a very slow and gentle means of gaining correction and trying to avoid neurologic complications such as uh, paralysis or nerve injury. Again, you take the child to the operating room. They go to sleep under general anesthesia. And then a halo ring, which I have an example of here. This ring is fitted to the size of the skull. And then it's placed around the skull over the top like this. And it ends up just above the eyebrows and just along the back of the skull. And then it is often attached, I just have four pins here, but it is often attached to the skull with at least eight to 12 pins, which go through the skin and into the bone of the skull. What that does is it allows us to have a base of fixation on the skull from which we then can slowly add weight and gradually stretch the spine in, again, a gentle manner. I don't think the traction itself is painful. When the children wake up from the first anesthetic with the halo ring on, imagine that eight or 10 or 12 pins have been placed into your skull. They wake up with a headache. That headache often only lasts two to three days and it's easily treated with over-the-counter medications such as Tylenol or Motrin. Once they get over the kind of acute surgical pain from the halo application, the traction itself does not hurt. Many patients often say they feel better in traction. They feel unweighted. So imagine you have 80% of the bo your body weight sort of lifted off of your spine and you're also gradually gaining length and you're derotating your spine at the same time. So many of our patients, after they've been in traction, when it's time for definitive surgery, they say to me, Dr. McIntosh, I don't wanna come out of traction. And I'm like, well, you can't live in traction <laughs> for the rest of your life. And so often it's an education period of all of the gains we've made in traction We'll be able to keep those, but we have to put then the surgical instrumentation into the spine to maintain the correction that we uh, got while we were in traction. Halo gravity traction is not dangerous. I actually personally feel that it is safer than doing massive uh, vertebral column resections or massive osteotomies of the spine to gain correction. However, you are slowly adding weight and traction to a patient's spine. So you have to do it slowly. And we often are doing very uh, methodical neurovascular checks, making sure that no patient is developing any um, weakness or numbness. So the patients have a neuro check every day while they're in halo gravity traction. The length of traction depends on how the child responds. I would say on average, most patients are in traction from anywhere from four to 12 weeks. It just depends on how they tolerate adding the weight and how their spine is responding. But in general, it's a period of time in traction 
often, I would say on average, six to eight weeks in traction before they can have uh, their definitive spine surgery. I personally don't feel that nighttime traction is that beneficial. I also feel that the children need to get adequate rest during the night so that they can do their very best during the day. And so I don't make my children go into nighttime traction. Some feel better in traction, and if that is the case, I only have them in five or 10 pounds of traction at night so that they don't have 80% of their body weight hanging off while they're trying to sleep at night. But most children sleep just fine in traction. The hardest part is trying to find a pillow or something else that accommodates for the ring around your head. Okay, so now I'm gonna show a representative case example of the type of correction we can get in halo gravity traction. This is a representative case of a patient who was treated in halo gravity traction and then ultimately underwent spinal fusion. This patient has severe neuromuscular scoliosis and it is associated with the underlying diagnosis of cerebral palsy. This is the x-ray the patient presented with and this is the patient's presenting clinical photo. You can see that there's significant uh, trunk shift. You can also see the significant shoulder asymmetry and then the prominence of the kyphoscoliosis here and that's represented in the x-ray here. This is the patient in halo gravity traction. This patient uh, was taken to 80% of their body weight in traction. So what you can see here is the significant clinical and radiographic improvements that were gained in traction. I would like to point out that I think a unexpected uh, improvement was how much improvement we got in the spread of the ribs here. If I go back to the previous slide, you can see at the apex of the deformity how the ribs were so tightly clustered. And then in traction, we got significant spreading of the ribs here and this patient felt significantly better in traction, could breathe better, could walk better, could eat better, and actually gained 15 pounds in traction. So that was a nice added benefit. These are the two clinical photos side by side, presenting photo and in 80% body weight traction. These are the x-rays side by side of the improvements. Again, you can see the significant improvements in the alignment of the spine, but also the really significant improvements in the chest wall. This is what the patient ended up. They ended up with a posterior spinal fusion from the mid cervical spine to the lower thoracic spine. But you can see the majority of the correction that was gained in traction was then locked in with the surgery and I was able to avoid having to do any significant vertebral column resection or any significant bony osteotomies, which then significantly decreases uh, the surgical neurologic risk. This patient was in traction for approximately 10 weeks.